Hey guys, today I'm going to do my out of box review for the Master Grade Turn A Gundam. And yeah, I gotta say, this Master Grade was really fun to build because it's really very different. Just every part about this was just quite different from normal Master Grades or at least recent Master Grades. It could be, of course, partially due to the fact that it's an older Master Grade and it's been a while since I've built an older Master Grade, but. Uh, this is just the design of the mobile suit is so different that the design of the kit had to be different as well. So it's really fun. It's, it's uh, refreshing. It's always nice to build something uh, that's a little bit different. So this kit uh, does come with a lot of cool stuff. And one thing that I really love about the Turn A Gundam is just the Turn A Gundam in the anime. And that's kind of one thing why I really, one reason probably why I've never built this kit before is because as much as I love the design in the anime, and I, I like the design, uh, the kit has never really just been like very high on my list of something that I really wanted to get. Um, I don't really know why, I just, just didn't really seem like that flashy as like a kit, so I don't know if that really makes sense, but I am really happy with this kit, and it's also I think one reason one other reason is maybe also because I don't really think this this design lends itself very well to customization very well. Like, I mean, even something as simple as just changing the color scheme, I think this is one of those designs that we very rarely see custom builds of this of the turn A like in a different color scheme. And when we do, personally, I just don't really think it ever really looks very good. It's just kind of a very specific design that has a very specific look and it doesn't really leave much room to be altered. I don't know, that could just be me. I mean, I'm sure there's probably some of you guys who have fantastic ideas of what you could do with this, or there's probably some awesome custom builds out there that I haven't seen. I mean, the Turn A Shin would be a great example. That HG kit that I did review for you guys, that's a really interesting take on the design, uh, just customized Turn A Gundam. So, it is possible, but I don't know what I'm really talking about here, so let's just get into talking about some of the articulation. So I love this one single part for the big mustache there. It's really nice. Uh, the head can go up to there. We do have like clear yellow eyes. So as I talked about in the unboxing, the eye parts are clear yellow and then there's a gray part that fits over that. So you actually don't really even have to paint anything at all. But it's really hard to see in there as it is now. But it is there, that clear yellow part does look good when you can actually see that. The head articulation is up to there. So that is looking really nice down to there. So really nice articulation there in the neck. Obviously it can turn all the way around, no problem with that. The shoulder armor can move kind of on its own. Or it's actually like on a, a track, so it actually does have like a, a limit to how much you can rotate that. This little bit here on the side can also, that little tiny flap there, can also move up and down a little bit. The arm itself can move forward and back a bit, and then you can bring that up to just about 90 degrees there, but then you can like kind of rotate that and fake it like he's grabbing his beam saber handle or something off the backpack, which we'll get to later. That uh, arm, of course, will have a nice double joint, giving you uh, much more than 90 degrees, not a full 180, but a pretty nice bend there in the elbow. And then the rotation is actually at the elbow joint, so you can see there, it's like just at the top of the elbow. So usually the, art, the uh, rotation of the arm is up around here, but this is a little bit lower on this one, so the upper arm doesn't actually rotate at all. The wrist is just on a ball joint, and you can see this whole cent this whole middle part there also moves, so you have a little bit of movement there. Here in the torso section, some really nice bending forward and back there, like so. So once you get this like bent back like that, and the head all the way up like that, it's gonna have like a really nice like flying, lunging pose like that, flying forward. I think that was very intentional in the design. Side to side also, you can move it a little bit side to side there, not a whole lot, and then of course some rotation. Here in the front, all these little hatches will open up. All right, there we go. Okay, it's a little bit tricky. I had to get out the tweezers to pry the, all those little doors open, but there's one, two, three, four doors on each side, and then this whole section can actually come out, and then you can actually replace that in the middle, which I'll talk about here in a moment. While I'm on the subject of replacing parts, you can also replace that center part with this white one if you want. Uh, just That's just based on different artwork for the mobile suit. So if you want that part is included, you could of course always just paint that as well. Here in the front skirts, these uh, wings here is, are actually kind of part of the transformation of the core fighter and mine's coming apart a little bit here. Well, I've got that off, I'm fixing that, I figure I might as well show you what the core fighter looks like. It's just like this. Underneath that clear yellow part, we do have a seated tiny little Loran Sehak figure there, just sitting inside the cockpit. You actually are meant to sort of 
turn that around, but for just the sake of this, I'm just leaving it like that. Now the side skirts here are just on ball joints, so those will kind of move around, nothing really too special there. It's kind of interesting how you see like on these like lining parts here, here on the side skirt, that's just a small little black sticker, where here that's uh, actual just dark gray plastic, 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 plastic. So for the, the majority of the kit, that's actual like plastic of the inner frame or just like gray plastic showing through the white parts here. But for the side skirts, unfortunately, they didn't put a gray piece of plastic behind that. It's just a very simple piece there. So they just made up for that by just a small black sticker. So this kit does have a few stickers, though not really all that many. Here in the hips, the legs work pretty normally. They can actually come out very far. As you can see, you can bring the legs completely separate like that and forward is right about perpendicular like so before that's just running into the front skirt and you can get a 90 and then almost a full 180 degree bend out of the knee there a nice little red bit poking through the knee armor and so there's that full bend there at the knee looking really really nice and down here one of the coolest bits of articulation is this bend in the middle of the leg so you can see this part here bends like that and also when you do that these veins here on the back of the leg We'll move up and down like that so just really awesome detail there with all of that in the back of the leg and the fact that those also will move like so just looks really really cool when you're doing that the feet will close up there you can see so the front i kind of call it a toe i guess but sort of toe the front part of the foot underneath the foot not really a whole lot of detail there but it's not hollow or anything so the feet will move side to side a little bit not very much there's not really much room just because of the design there forward as to there that kind of the whole angle joint sort of comes down so you can bring the foot a little bit farther forward uh, back obviously not going to be a big problem there either so overall the articulation is really really nice so as you may have noticed underneath the crotch there might be kind of difficult to plug in an action base so actually what you're going to do is here on the back pull out this little piece there in the center Okay, careful not to use that, not to lose that. And then you have this little action base connector here, which will just plug into that slot there on the back. Now, before I do that, we'll also show you these little panels here on the backpack do also open up like that. And these don't really seem to stay in place very well. Like this one just seems to be coming off entirely. So I wouldn't really mess around with those too much unless you're using the Moonlight Butterfly effect parts, which I think also will, uh, we'll use those holes in there, but otherwise just kind of leave those as they are. Also, just a reminder, it did come with some dry transfer decals, which I didn't use. Uh, the ones that you may want to use is just that, uh, the A symbol there, that turn A symbol there for his head. If you guys didn't know, that turn A symbol, that upside down A is actually the mathematics symbol for universal quantification, which is a very interesting point, I think. You do also have small little 100 scale figures of Laurent Sehak in his uh, pilot outfit and a cow, which you can, of course, store in the chest. So as I mentioned before, these containers here in the chest can be removed. You can remove that and then you have the parts like for the missiles in there. You can also remove that. So then you got your missile parts. You can take those out and then you can store the cow in there. So that can just sit in there. That was a scene from the anime where they're rescuing a cow and keeping it there in the chest. So that can just stay in there and you can recreate that scene. We do also have a set of beam saber handles and beam saber effect parts. These are nice thin beam saber effect parts that do match the look from the anime. Beam saber handles here I just have in these little racks which will attach onto the backpack here. Or not really backpack, I guess it's just the back of the shoulders. So those just sit on there like that, and then you can pull the beam saber handles out of there for when you want to use those. Those do have a peg and will peg into the hands. Obviously not these open hands, which I have on the kit now. Those are just fixed open hands, but very nicely detailed. We do also get a set of these master grade hands which have individually articulated fingers, which is pretty cool. So all of those will move. The thumb is also articulated, so you can actually just then plug this beam saber handle into the hand for when you want to use that. 
But we do still have its main weapons to get to, so here is the Gundam Hammer. It has just a nice long chain here that is all plastic though, and so cleaning up all like the mold lines and everything on that is going to be pretty annoying. I think probably your best bet would be getting just a different like metal, actual metal chain and replacing that. But it's got the hook on the end. This one, as you can see, also does have that tab there, so you can plug that into the hand for extra security, no problem. And then just the ball and here spiked ball mace at the end of that. Then we have the Turney Gundam's shield, sort of plain as it is. I've really come to like this shield. It's just very simple and effective. I think it looks pretty cool. Here on the bottom, we can see we have this uh, handle, which will fold out. You can use that if you want. Otherwise, it has these kind of side parts. You plug that onto the arm and then close that around the arm. It just kind of looks more secure. It doesn't really add all that much in terms of the security. This is on a track, so you can slide that up and down as you'd like. Thankfully, this does actually attach onto the side of the arm rather than the back, so that's always good. We have a connection for this as well. Here on the back of the shoulders, if we lift up that little panel there, you see there's a little spot we can plug in this connection piece. That just plugs into there. It can fold that part of the armor back down, and then we can now plug the shield onto the backpack like so. And then he can carry his shield on his back like that. And then we have the beam rifle. So here it is, and it's just collapsed form. You could just hold it by the top of the handle there. But you can also pull this part back like so and reveal this handle here, which then we can pull out like that. And you can use that handle just for the side. It also has this panel here underneath. You can slide that back to reveal a normal handle here, which then you can pull that out. And then if you wanted, you can just close that back part back up again if you want and just have it like that. That handle just kind of straight down, it looks pretty derpy like that, but when it's actually in the hand, I think this rifle does actually look pretty cool. So we do have a connection piece for the rifle as well, so you can just plug that onto the back, and then this will just plug onto here. There we go, that's actually very nice and secure, so now you can carry the shield and rifle on his back like so. So just for a quick size comparison, here is the Master Ray Justice Gundam without its shoulder boomerangs and backpack attached, but just the kind of base Gundam, just so you can get a comparison. I was thinking the Tourney was larger, but um, I guess maybe not, so, and it's just about the exact same size as the Justice there, a little bit different in terms of its proportions, of course, but um, not super big, although it does feel, I mean, pretty large when you're working with it. Anyway, I guess that's maybe just how it feels. Alright, so yeah, I gotta say it's a little bit awkward to try to pose this with the Action Maze connector connected straight onto the back. It's definitely different and I'm not really used to that, but it does seem to work pretty well. If you want to do like a pose like this where it's sort of like off to the side anyway, it's just going to look a little bit odd with the Action Maze or just the angle of that. I don't know really quite how to describe it, the way that it lines up anyway. Could just be me. The other problem though is that you can't have the shield connected onto the back at the same time, or at least there's some part that I'm missing, but the shield covers too much of the back, it gets in the way, it covers that uh, port where you need to plug on the action base, so that's kind of disappointing that you can't have the shield on the backpack while it's on an action base. Um, this is a kit that I think can probably do so much great ground posing that you, if you really wanted to have a shield on the backpack, you could just have a really nice just ground pose, you don't really need to worry about an action base. But this kit, I think, can also do a lot of really great aerial posing as well. So, I guess it really just depends on what you want to do, but just have it in mind that you can't do both in that case. Now, like I said before, at least in my own personal opinion, I don't really believe that this design really lends itself well to much customization. That being said, I think one thing it does really lend itself really well to is posing. I think the just the dynamics, the way that the, the design of the kit is, and then also just like the, the shapes of everything, the engineering on Bandai's part in terms of making it in, the design into an actual model kit is all really fantastic as well. And considering the age of this kit, this doesn't feel like an old Master Grade at all. It definitely feels perfectly up to date as if it were to come out now. I really don't think that Bandai really could do a whole lot to improve on this if they were to redo the design by having it out now. I'm sure there'd be a, a couple of small improvements probably here and there. Uh, but overall, this kit definitely stands up. Now, I feel like with this review, I could have done a million different poses with this kit. I definitely could have done some of the more comical poses from the anime, or just some of the more silly moments, things like that. I basically just wanted to try to just show off the weapons and things like that to you guys. Uh, 
Those of you who are fans of the series, if you get this kit or if you have this kit, you can obviously get more creative with your poses or however you want to do it. But one thing that I did find out, unfortunately, is that uh, I guess it probably should have been expected as most kits with very large uh, accessories like the back. The rifle is not really all, particularly huge, but the back of it is quite large, so that is going to be getting in the way a little bit. It's kind of hard to get the butt of that rifle tucked underneath the arm. Uh, just because of that, uh, the way that all that goes together. So it's a little bit hard to hold that rifle by the handle there. Uh, and the shield as well, just the shape of the shield and how that is nice and close to the arm. I, I really like that the shield is held very closely, tightly on the side of the arm. I really like that. I much prefer that to shields that go on the back of the arm or shields that go on the side of the arm where there's like a huge gap between the arm and the shield. I just think that looks really bad. This one, the way that it attaches onto the arm looks great, but unfortunately it does kind of get in the way with the shoulder armor a little bit, so how you want to pose that. The other thing that I think that could become a problem with this kit, especially after painting it when you have like the added weight of a few layers of primer, paint, top coat, and all of that on, added onto the weight of the kit is uh, the limbs of this kit are going to be pretty heavy. Uh, the arms are particularly aren't that heavy, but once you add the shield on there, the shield does add quite a bit of weight to the arm. The legs are very heavy because they have a lot of parts going on in there. Um, there is a lot of ABS in this kit as well, if you remember from the unboxing, so take that whether you like that or not. Some people may like that fact or dislike it, depending on, I guess, uh, your feelings on that. But Ultimately, I feel like this kit comes with everything really that you would want it to come with. It comes with all of the kind of main weapons. It does come with a few more like fun accessories like the Gundam Hammer. I think they probably could have definitely have not included that, but it's really nice that they did. The, of course, the 100 scale cow is a very famous point of this kit, and that was just really a, a nice little extra thing that Bandai threw in there that I think they really didn't have to. So overall, I think Bandai definitely went the extra mile with this kit to really make it good. And it was the 100th Master Grade, so it does make sense, and it's... Uh, at the time, I'm sure they were probably only thinking of making this Master Grade from the series. Of course, later on, we did finally get the Turn X as well, and I'm really, really hoping that at least someday we maybe get a 100 scale Sumo. Well, we have a 100 scale Sumo, but a newer one, whether it be a Master Grade or even an RE100 kit, I think would definitely be cool. And I could do like they love to do and make one of the versions of the Sumo a regular release and the other version a P Bandai release, you know. So, I don't know about that. Uh, my fingers are crossed. In the meantime, I do have the 100 scale sumo. I should build that and review it for you guys and then uh, compare it with this kit. Uh, that's the gold plated one. But anyway, if you guys still have any questions or comments about this, uh, do leave those down below. If you guys have never watched Turn A, do take the time to watch it sometime if you have the chance. It is actually quite good as an anime series, I think. If you go into it thinking like, it's going to be an awesome Gundam series, then I think you're going to be a little bit disappointed. I think it's just a really good anime series that also has Gundam, a Gundam and other mobile suits in it. So that's I think would be that I think would be the best way to go about it. And uh, yeah, just enjoy. Thank you guys for watching. See you next time. Bye. Thanks for watching. See you next time. <laughs>